The French felt threatened by incursion and a fear that the English would encroach on their Indian trade. And when settlers who bought land from the Ohio Company sought to settle on it, the French, using their Indian allies as willing surrogates, reacted violently and forced the settlers out, threatening them, destroying crops, animals, homes, and farms. Like any customer sold a useless product, the evicted settlers went back to the Ohio Company for a refund. This threatened the entire scheme, and Governor Dinwiddie stepped in with overt political power to salvage the enterprise. Advised that the best way to deal with this dust-up was to send a strongly worded message to the French establishing the English king's claim, the governor would command the French to get out of English territory. Seeking a courier, he learned of a young gentleman who not only had experience in the wilds of that frontier as a surveyor, but was also a major in Virginia's militia. Dinwiddie called in Washington and asked him to undertake this task. The young man, anxious to prove himself, to make a name for himself, and there was opportunity for financial gain, readily agreed. On October 30th, 1753, Washington left Williamsburg, traveled north through Fredericktown, now known as Winchester, crossed land that would in the following year become Hampshire County, Virginia, and arrived at the Ohio Company's post at Wills Creek, where the creek spills into the Potomac River on November 14th, 1753. There he employed four men as servitors, to handle logistics, make camp, handle the horses, and so forth, along with a trader who spoke several Indian dialects. He also took on Jacob Van Brahm, a 24-year-old ex-soldier Dutchman, as a French interpreter, and gained the critical services of Christopher Gist, an experienced trapper, survey, and woodsman. Gist owned land in the area of the expedition's objective the French headquarters in what is now western Pennsylvania. The new Fort Le Boeuf was one of a string of forts the French had begun erecting as early as 1750 and was to be headquarters for French forces in the central region. Quebec was the main focus in the east and New Orleans in the south. It was to the commander at Le Boeuf Washington was to deliver Dinwiddie's ultimatum. From Wills Creek, the party took the Nemacullen Indian Trail west, arriving in Logstown on November 24th. There, Washington, Gist, Van Brahm, and the Indian-speaking trader met with Tanakarison, a Seneca chieftain known as the Half-King for his strong Iroquois affiliations and influence. His second-in-command, Monacatusha, also known as Scarasadi, and other friendly Indians. They discussed trade, friendship to the English, and Washington engaged some of the Indians to accompany his party to Venango, the French advance post. The French officer in charge at Venango could not address Washington's mission and referred him to the French commandant a few miles further on at the recently erected Fort Le Boeuf. Arriving there, Washington, after a courteous reception, presented the letter from Dinwiddie, which, in essence, told the French, Get out. French Commandant Le Gardier de Saint-Pierre said he would forward the message to his commander, Governor Duquesne, in Quebec, but that he would in no other way deal with the English demands, and he would defend his position to the best of his ability. Saint-Pierre let it be known that his fealty to his most Christian king, Louis XV, was immovable. Washington could do nothing, but while there, took careful notice of French defenses at the fort and later drew up a map. His mission completed, after some delays, he and his party began their return journey. Along the way, Washington visited the forks of the Ohio, where the Monongahela and Allegheny Rivers joined to form the Ohio River, and noted that the critically sighted position needed to be occupied by British forces and defended. 
Washington, anxious to report to Dinwiddie, decided his party was moving too slowly. He and Gist went on alone afoot to 